Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Futures Trading Room Open House. This is uh, the last day. It is November 16th. It is Thursday, and it is 9.05 a.m. Eastern. Welcome, everybody. We had a really amazing last two days. Everybody should be green, <laughs> deep green. Don't give profits back. Okay, don't give profits back. All right, it's so hard to make money in the market. It's not easy. You need to be really super skilled in order to pull money out of the market and in order to see setups. And I would hate everybody to go on and continue to trade throughout the day. <laughs> and my members know we make money in the morning, we're done. We lock it in. We lock those profits. All right, just because the market is open, just before, just because the, uh, the price action is moving up or down doesn't mean that we need to, to get into a trade. You need to have strict parameters in order to get into a trade. You need to respect the market timing. So for those of you that are new and I see new faces every single day, my name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeAllow.com which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, and actively invest in the market. Uh, I'm a professional independent trader focused on trading equities and futures for the last 20 years. So I trade stocks, I swing trade and invest in stocks. And once in a while, I day trade stocks as well. And I day trade futures, day trade and swing trade futures. I'm doing this successfully for more than 20 years. That is when Literally, I gave up my job <laughs> to do this full time. Uh, and I don't regret one second. The reward, the money that you make into the market, even when you start super small, because I started small. And a lot of you guys know the story. I'm not going to repeat it. But I started risking $100 in the market. That was my risk limit. And now I'm up to 5000 I could go even higher, but I don't want to. And I don't need to. Bottom line is you need to grow your account so that you into such into such an amount where you don't need to grow your account anymore. And then you're just pulling income out of that account. So I also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETF since 2010. It's the first program that um that basically um propelled trade out loud into uh, the world of trading. And I also run a swing, I also run a futures trading room for futures uh, since 2017, January 2017. We have been teaching the course, the uh, Power Income course since 2015. And uh, within those two years, 15 to 17, I would just do the free market game plan, deliver the barometers to my traders. And then I had the request to basically handhold traders. So it was a service only for members. And I had so many requests to service other members and to service other traders just like you through the market. And I love it. I love doing it. For me, it's just, you know, amazing that I could teach traders every single day what I do and I share my trades out loud. All right. So um, I do specialize in high velocity trades. You guys saw the type of trades that I take. And um, just before we get started, please keep in mind that all information provided is for educational purpose only. Trading involves a high level of risk because you could lose money if you don't know what you're doing. So before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, level of experience, risk appetite, etc. For those of you that want to get a hold of us and check us out, what we offer, uh, you could visit tradeoutloud.com. You can find us uh, on social media. Our handle is tradeoutloud. And if you want to email us, it's info at tradeoutloud.com. Here, here are the rules to the game. No questions in the first hour because my focus is trading. And I promise you that I will allocate time at the end of the trading session for questions. 
to answer questions. Small accounts can participate in any trade setup using micros. And if they're, you're here for the very first time, just watch the dynamics. Don't just go hitting buttons because especially if you don't know how to position size. Position sizing is key and we recommend traders to use one or two percent of their account size risk per trade. So just to let you guys know, I use one percent and I'm a really amazing trader. I could tell you this right now. And I'm not even like I'm not telling you this to impress you, but to impress upon you because you can become the same. So what do I do typically? Depending on price action, just like I have highlighted yesterday, I take partial profits into targets. Typically, target one is the easiest target to achieve. So that's where I typically take out half of the price action is having a hard time getting into target one. If the price action doesn't have a hard time getting into target one, then um, I may keep the whole position and uh, find and scale out of the trade once the price action is having a little bit of uh, problems achieving targets. Uh, all the targets will be uh, set, uh, will be called out loud, and also will be posted in the trading room. If, for example, if you're trading with one contract, pull or micro, uh, you will obviously hold the whole entire position and trail the whole entire position until we exit. Example of a call trade. So, um, for example, if we're trading SMP, you will see the symbol ES, you will see the direction L or S, long or short. And you're going to see the parameters. For example, 4431 four, by 4420. The first number represents the entry. The second number represents the stop. Your obligation as a trader is that before you get into a trade, calculate the difference between the entry and the stop. And that represents your risk. And therefore, you have your risk level. And then you have, you have to position size. And targets will be displayed as well. So once again, all call trades will be uh, trailed live on the microphone. So please be on time because if you're late and if you're coming back, we will not answer questions that have already been discussed. So what to expect? In a few moments, we will begin our day with the pre-market game plan. Now you see how I begin my day with the pre-market game plan, establish a directional bias. This is the most important thing, whether we're going to be bullish or bearish. And after that, we're going to be discussing and seeing after the open what we're going to be trading based upon what rocks the market, because every day is different. So you guys saw that we basically uh, had trades in all the indices. We had trades in the Dow and S&P and NASDAQ and Russell, right? So the reason why we selected Russell, for example, yesterday is because it had relative strength. So traders that are focused only on trading the m &E and are missing the big picture. They're getting lazy or they don't have enough knowledge to trade the market. You have to trade what is in play that day, where the institutional rotation, power move, and um, uh, money is flowing into. So we're going to also analyze the current market context. We're going to go over news and analyze the impact of price action. Uh, we're going to go through some earnings reports uh prior uh, from prior day and also for the current day open we're going to try to identify some opportunities after the open identifying high ads patterns we're going to be waiting for a trade so there may be some quiet time because if there's a trade that is not aligned i am going to wait until that trade is literally going to start um you know forming um, determining the execution strategy parameters and all trades trailing, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end, we're going to do a quick recap of the session. We focus on anything under the sun, any kind of strategy, whether it's momentum, continuation, uh, trend trading, counter trend trading, and even swing trading. Um, so how trades are going to be called, uh, once again, um, uh, and I want to highlight something uh, before I continue. I closed the swing trade in the Dow at 35,000. Just so you guys know, I closed my swing trade that we had from last week at 35,000. Okay. The one that I entered at 34,167 closed at 35,000. All right. So all trades obviously will be called on the microphone. Uh, all trades will be posted in the trading room using caps. If there is a momentum trade that is really too fast in development, I will not have time to post it in the trading room, but I will call it on the mic so everybody has time to enter the trade position size and do all the fun stuff. 
We only use limit orders. We never use buy at market or hop in the trade or boom, boom, boom. No. Um, all right. So today's Thursday. It's actually right here. We had earnings from Alibaba and Walmart this morning. You guys know that Walmart is part of the Dow and Walmart is down this morning. Okay. Walmart is down this morning. So that is going to affect of uh, the overall activity into the Dow because it's a big component. We also had Macy's that reported earnings. Macy's, uh, Macy's is up. And we had Baba, uh, Alibaba that reported earnings this morning and the stock is down. Uh, last night, we have Cisco that reported earnings and it is down. It is basing right now. Uh, and it's actually trading into uh somewhat of support level i like it because the weekly is actually not bad um so anything under 50 may be a buying opportunity for the investing side so we have a very mixed market of uh, from the uh from the earning side so that means that we have a little bit of pressure into the market now uh as far as economic events we had some um uh, FOMC members that spoke very early in the morning. At 8.30, we had the unemployment claims. We had the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. We didn't really see a lot of volatility, to be very honest. And uh, we had import prices. Uh, just about a minute ago, we had industrial production and capacity utilization rate. And uh, at 9.25, again, we have an FOMC member that will be speaking. At 10 o'clock, also pay attention, inflection point into the market, NHB, housing market index. And at 10.30, we have another FOMC member that is going to be speaking. And we have the natural gas storage also at, um, at 10.30. All right. So with that being said, we're going to shift the screen uh, into um into our indices and let's see what we have going on for the trading session today first off an o first off an overlook at the market and let's see what we uh have in the indices if they're up they're down and what the deal is all right so we're starting the day with a little bit of red throughout and it was it is expected because of the data that came in it's expected because of the earnings so the dow yes it's down uh, 70 points. That's not very significant. Um, basically, it's into that, you know, kind of like unchanged situation. Uh, four points down in ES. Again, very neutral. NASDAQ neutral with 30 points down. Russell, very neutral with only six points down. We have gold that spiked to the upside. We're going to talk a later about it. And we have oil back down to $75. It's down a dollar and 50 cents. Uh, and it's down about 2%. So we have a pretty mixed market. Uh, we have, um, uh, let's say, an unchanged market in the sense, sideways market, which is expected because tomorrow is option expiration. So we're going to be very careful. Uh, like I said before, I don't trade option expiration. Uh, if I want to gamble, I literally go to the casino because I like going to the casino, but uh, my personal account is not a casino, so I don't use it in that scope. It's very risky to trade option expiration because you really don't know what, um, you know, what the day is going to look like. And typically there's a lot of fleecing. Volume is always low. And I like to trade with full-blown volume. Um, all right. So now we're going to get into our analysis here. Okay. So here we have uh, the Dow, obviously, the four time frames, the 1H, the daily, the weekly, and uh, the monthly. So monthly bullish, uh, weekly bullish. We still have room for higher into the 350. Um, um, that's 35, 350. Uh, we're creating a little bit of resistance from yesterday's high into the 35,100. Obviously, anything over 35,100 is going to be bullish. Look at the narrow date that we had yesterday. Just a little bit of grind up and then back to sideways. We have the rising 50 SMA. We have support uh, from um, uh, price action into the 900. So 900 becomes the level, the line in the sand. Below 900, we can look a little bit more bearish. We talked about this level also yesterday. 
All right. So as you can see here, the Dow um, on the four hour is sitting beautifully on the 10 exponential moving average. If the price action should develop the kind of setup below 900, then we will be looking for a, a pullback. Uh, keep in mind that the pullback area that I will be looking at is going to be under 900. So more likely it's going to be 890. So 890, that's going to be the level that I will look. That doesn't mean that I will be uh, in the trade once it blips into that point because the, the volatility that um, is created exactly when the door opens at 930, when the market opens at 930 can produce that spike down. OK, so I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a setup that is conducive with a good risk, with a good stop. So I could have protection in case the trade doesn't work. All right. But as long as it's still trading above the 10 EMA, it's into still a superpower trend, especially on the 4H. And on the 1H, we could see a sandwich, a possible sandwich down. But the, the shorting level would be just about here. So this is still super strong uh, territory. And if we go lower, then yes, we have room to 800 and uh, most likely we could have a big follow through to the downside, even back to 34, 500. So yes, we do have room for the downside. We do have room for the upside. Okay. All right. So here is the uh, mini S&P. This is the one hour. This is the daily, weekly, and uh, the monthly, bullish, monthly, bullish, weekly. Here is what I'm noticing on the daily, and I'm uh, zooming in a little bit. I'm seeing a topping tail here with the possibility of retracement, even um, a possibility for a further retracement, about 44.50. So it has a lot of room to go lower. So basically, the line in the sand is going to be 4,500, 4,500 to 4,505. Uh, now, overnight, we had a 4507. You can see the blip that we had one blip here and one blip over here. So we really need to break below this 4500. And if we do, we are going to uh, we are going to see lower price action. All right. So this is the planning for um, uh, for the yes. And for the bullish side, by the way, we do have a lot of room to about 4550 to 4560. So we have targets for the upside, targets for the downside. Then we have NASDAQ. All right. NASDAQ shows a little bit more weakness here. Take a look at NASDAQ, what NASDAQ did yesterday. It was one of the weakest indices. Ta-da. It was literally one of the weakest indices. We saw the Dow and we saw, yes, that we're trying to hold. And now we have NASDAQ that didn't react. It just came in, right? And now we're having this base. Now here's uh, here's uh, what I'm saying. Uh, over 900, this is going to be bullish with a chance of continuation back to 16,000. Now the danger zone, the line in the sand, is going to be 800. So if it breaks 800, it will start moving lower, and it has a lot of room for lower, uh, at least into the 700. So from 800 to 700, it has a void. Still, it has a lot of resistance and it has resistance levels along the way. But this is the ballpark uh, room to run into. And then we have RTY that had extreme strength in yesterday's session. Extreme strength in yesterday's session. But what happened yesterday? Remember where I when I said it's going to go? Probably I see no problem for uh, Russell running into 30 to 35. OK, here it is. It went to 38 and a half. So uh, this is the line in the sand for it. And then we have the topping tail here. This is usually a reversal pattern. So if the price goes under 1800 and definitely needs to have a formation above 1800, because here's the here's the nuance that a lot of newbies are going for. Oh, if the price goes under 1800, it's bearish. They don't look at the context of the intraday momentum. And what they do is they hop it because they hear that word. Oh, my God, it's bearish. It means it's going to go down. It has to provide you a pattern because without a pattern, these indicators that we have here are garbage. OK, these are some ballpark areas where we may have some reaction. But if you don't know patterns and if you don't know candlestick formations, you cannot trade. 
successfully. All right. So you need to have the whole package. You need to have, you need to know how to trade with the indicators that we use, which are literally like very few, but most importantly is pattern formation, candlestick formation, momentum, uh, market timing. These are the most important things for the market. Okay. All right. So uh, this, these are the levels for RTY. RTY definitely has uh, uh, room to run a little bit lower. However, uh, from 1800 to 1890, it still has tons of support, so it could still bounce. Uh, any kind of base around these levels is going to propel it higher. I want to show you guys the 4H. The 4H, if it takes out the 1815, it's going to be bullish, and it's going to try to attempt the prior high from the 1838, uh, obviously 1835. And from that point on, it could go to 50, 75, 1900, okay? So if we have that direction, if it takes out, uh, if it takes out these high, the, the overnight highs, overnight high, 13 and a half. So 1415, and it, it's rising higher, okay? It's also trading into a weekly cluster right here because as you guys can see it's in the core of the range you guys see the range on the weekly it's in the core of the range whenever the price reaches the core of the range the bias is neutral okay so you should not even touch it if you don't know what you're doing all right so um this is pretty much it what we see into it so like i said we still have a little bit of room into the 80s not very excited about it we need to see what the open is going to bring because right now we're not getting you know anywhere and remember we need a bit as with any option expiration uh weeks week you need uh and you you're going to have a big move up big move down and the rest is going to be chopping sideways because that's their scope. That's their goal to kill the premiums, right? All right. So uh, let's go to CL because oil is down. All right. Uh, oil is down. It's actually trading below these lows right here. Uh, I typically don't trade when uh, we have these uh, rollovers. And by the way, for those of you asking, you see this horizontal line right here. So think or swim is shifting you automatically into the contract that is in play where the volume is. Uh, we have moved to the January contract. This is the January contract in oil. This is CLF24. And it carries a volume of 117,000 contracts at this moment. If you still want to trade, the December contract still has four days into it. So you're safe to trade it today or tomorrow if you want. But it doesn't have a lot of volume. You may get slipped. You may get, you know, may get fleecy. That only carries 30,000 uh, contracts. So if you still want to play the Z, the Z is still the December contract. You still have a couple of days left. Actually, four days left. I suggest you trade today and tomorrow just shift to where the volume is, where everybody is, okay? All right, so uh, CLF, F24, this is oil. It's trading January contract. And then we have uh, the analysis on it, right? So let's talk about the analysis on it. This is bearish. This is a uh, bear cone. Uh, and we could see follow through a little bit lower, but keep in mind 200 SMA here and the 50 SMA here, along with minor support. We have prior highs that represent minor support for current area. Minor support is so much more stronger than anything else because these minor support zones are only developing in uptrends. You're not going to find them in downtrends. Okay. You can trade USO Bonnie. Okay. USO. Um, so I actually like USO better than trading, um, oil futures at this moment in time, for example, today. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's oil on the weekly. So oil on the weekly still has room to 70, but here on the monthly doesn't really have that much room. So I don't know. Um, we're going to have to wait and see. I'm not very excited. I typically do not even touch oil a day before it rolls, or at least a couple of days before it rolls. All right. Uh, and then we have GC, we have gold. 
All right, so gold, keep in mind, we're trading the December contract as indices are in the December contract as well. I don't think I need to highlight that. Uh, but GC um, is trading the December contract and uh, looking good. All right. And I think that when GC, so in about, it's still, it's still 13, it has 13 days left. So probably you still have a week to trade, uh, to trade gold, uh, December gold. So only one week and then done. So after Thanksgiving, you, uh, they're going to shift. And here's my take on it. I think that we're going to skip a month. We're not going to trade the January, but we're going to skip into the February. That's right. We're going to skip into February. We already have some clues out there. Uh, here's what I'm seeing in gold. If it takes out these highs over here, so this is a huge inflection point. We have support from this cluster here throughout October and beginning of November that is creating minor resistance. If we get above this minor resistance over 80, 80 is a critical point. It's an institutional level as well, uh, that 1980. If we tackle that and if it breaks above that, 2000, 2020 is going to be in the cards. OK, and we're looking at this as being a bull sandwich with the possibility of the stop for a swing into the 1950, just below the 1950. And if we get a weekly rotation, uh, weekly rotation would be 2000 this week. Uh, yeah, it's possible. We still have two days, two days left. So um, and typically commodities move when we have option expiration. OK, all right. All right, everybody. So um, this was the analysis and the bias uh, for the market. We're going to talk a little bit more about the bias. So at this point in time, we're neutral. We're not bearish. We're not bullish. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, what the market has to offer at this point. We're going to go back to these charts. Uh, Trevor, heating oil. Yeah, I haven't looked at it. Let me check at it. Let me check it out. No, it's not a signal for me. Because you get more money, Brian. <laughs> with futures you make more money and better on taxes much better on taxes talk to your accountant about it mm-hmm I'm not allowed to tackle that subject because I'm not a CPA, so I can get in trouble for it. All righty. So what are we seeing, guys, here? We're seeing a little spike in YM. While YM is going higher, we have NASDAQ lower, neutral Russell, neutral S&P. We're just waiting. And again, we may or may not have a trade every single day. I'm not coming into the market to say, oh my gosh, I'm going to make $500 or whatever. No, I'm taking what the market offers. And if the market is not offering anything, then I am not taking a trade. A bit of divergency that we have into the market right now with NASDAQ pointing a little bit lower. So remember yesterday we started the day watching the Dow and then we ended up uh, taking Russell. Um, <clears throat> intraday Dow is messy. Intraday Dow is really messy. But Dow is still strong. Let me see Walmart. If Walmart is going to turn around.
the Dow is going to turn around. UNH strong, Goldman Sachs still holding, Home Depot holding, Microsoft just about to make a new high. Uh, we have JP Morgan with a brand new high. IBM is strong. Bank of America strong. AXP strong. 3M strong. These right here that I'm that I'm mentioning uh, are Dow stocks. Apple with a new high. Disney very whew, Disney finally above break even. My goodness, I've been sitting in that stock like forever. <laughs> finally we're making money in it okay so uh procter and gamble sideways johnson and johnson strong crm strong caterpillar strong yeah the D dow stocks are strong <laughs> Ishan, I, I took I took Disney before all the you know wokeness and before all the um everything that you know all the bad news, the Santis and all that stuff, you know, the so it it I lived through all that chop and crap and now finally, you know, we're making money. Like as soon as I got it, it was the perfect setup. And as soon as I got it, all this news came out, boom, 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 that hit, hit it really hard. <laughs> so, yeah. So I stuck with it. Here's one thing. Here's one thing. Yeah. I know. I, Look, I haven't even looked at it <laughs> for months. I had alerts and I'm like, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. Yeah, I'm lying. I still look. But anyways, uh, the more you look, the more you're tempted to do something about it. You know what the best thing in trading, especially in swing trading is? Don't do anything. Don't do anything. Just let them trade. Yeah, exactly. At some point. And I think one of the most important things is when you select stocks, just go for the good stocks. Don't trade any garbage stocks. Go for high volume stocks, popular stocks, stocks that you believe in. All right, we're having some bottoming tails in NASDAQ. This is sign that bulls may start coming in. Yeah, Alex, no penny stocks. Been there, done that. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. There's a time for penny stocks in a deep recession or depression when everything becomes super cheap. <laughs> but other than that, no. Bottoming tails, bottoming tails, signs that uh, the, the bulls are coming in. We may have some bottoms soon. Let's see. Uh, Daniel, I know you like this setup in NASDAQ. Joe, Sammy, 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 15. Oh, I didn't even see it. Thanks for the heads up. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Good, good. Oh, looks bad on the daily. <laughs> okay. Okay, but it may, it may punch through. That's how it starts.
scalp rooney is fine scalp rooney is fine to like 80 85 Okay, NASDAQ is, uh, here's the deal, guys. NASDAQ need, really needs to take out, and I'm going to put some levels on, so we don't want, so we don't want, so we don't watch pain try. All right, here's the bullish above level. But this may be an early entry above 57. Our stop is going to go below this pivot, not this pivot, but so maybe 57. We'll see. It's it's still too early, guys. It's still too early, but just a heads up on some formations. But that's the ultimate bullish above. So if throughout the day today, maybe it's not going to happen. Within our power hours, so maybe it's going to happen later today, or it may not happen at all. But that is the level where you should only think bullish. Shorting is not going to be an option. And if we get it over this level, the target is going to be 950 and 16,000. It, yeah, this is what it's all about. It, it, there are going to be a lot of fake moves today and tomorrow. Option expiration. Tomorrow. Yeah, Joshua. That's right. That's right. But it's still holding on the 4H, still holding on the 1H. And we also have FMP. With a line in the stand here where it has the bullish above shorting is not going to be an option. And that line in the stand is over 22. You see that purple line right here? That's the bullish part. I kind of like this one here. Um, It's not the best one, but... Let me go back to YM because this is the strongest. YM 35060. That's the line in the stand for it. Like I said, I'm at our 35,000 for that swing. Done with it. All right, here's the bullish above. All right, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, two intraday levels, one at 980 in the Dow, which is support, and the other one, 34,950. They're looking good. All right, uh, here's your sandwich, Joe. 80, 80, 80. Good job. Keep in mind, you're right into the uh, into the twenty SMA on the daily. I like YM, but I don't really have a good entry in it. See the one hour. Sorry about that. The one hour. Is inside and out and may go to the 60. Just going to watch it. This is a nice inside and out. Russell is pulling back. My gosh, go, you guys nailed it. I was too chicken to get it.
Chop, chop, fizz, fizz. See, we have some, even SMP is good, over 18. 18 has a little lid here. You can see the price stalling at 18, 18. I don't feel comfortable taking long when Russell is just testing the lows there. You need to know how to trade above uh, with the pivot points. It's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. Trust me. You could have pivot points and you could lose every single day. You need to know how to trade with them. Okay. I like the Dow because it's super bullish right here. So it's getting into my bullish above zone. Here's what I want to do. I'm taking some here, but my stop is going to be 940, okay? 940 is going to be my stop. This is going to be a longer term trade, okay? So it's not probably going to quit in 10 minutes, okay? It's not sort of, it's, it could take a whole day. It could take into tomorrow, okay? So I want to do, this is the trade for me. Not sure it's for you guys. It's long. It's a long over at 35.065. And my stop is going to be 940 for it. And uh, because this is such a strong bullish momentum. And here I hesitated. But like I said, I liked it over here. And I was reading the chat. <laughs> I should put it away. Guys, <laughs> I'm putting the chat away, so... Okay. Uh, targets. 100, 120. 150, 170. It's actually 77, but it's 70. I'm going to put 70. 200 and room to run. To 34, uh, I'm sorry, 35, 35, 350. Okay, if there's a shorter term trade, I will highlight that. Gold is on fire. Joe nailed it once again. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lori as well. Okay, uh, here's another bullish above. Uh, setup. This is the confirmation that the price action, if achieves these purple levels right here, um, they have 80% chances of continuation higher, but still 20%, they could still stop out. So S&P is bullish over 23, 45.23. The stop We'll have to use 4505 or 4507. I don't have any other smaller um, stops for it. And SMP has room to run into the 4530, 4540. And if over 4540, could run to 4550 and 4566, 66. So gorgeous. So if you want SMP long, 45.23, the stop goes 45.07. And the targets, forty-five thirty, forty-five forty.
and plus ultimately run into the 4566. Okay, these are the targets. These are more day swing targets. Oh, seven, 17 is nothing, Raj. Oh, seven, below the pivots. If you're choosing 17, you're going to get dinged out of the trade. Might as well not take the trade. Careful with gold, guys, because it's right there, 85. 85 is into target zone. And then you have 87 to 88. Then you have from, from 80, 88, you have 2000. If it's going to continue. All right, these are the two trades right now, both long. Great job, Joe. Awesome. We have 10 minutes into 10 o'clock. Remember, 10 o'clock comes with uh, some news as well. It's also an inflection point into the market. It's 10 o'clock reversal time. Russell continues to test into that 90s. Remember that danger zone is into the 80s. Uh, Alex, you're asking some questions. Scroll up and you can see all the trades. Okay. Uh, so here we need to see the price closed above. We had a tackle above the purple line. And now we need to uh, see where we close. No other setups are forming right now. Not that we need, but... I needed to see, and we may be able to reduce the stop in uh, YM, by the way. If the price action in the Dow is going to start hitting 100 to 120, we're going to be reducing um, the stop. 
here's what we're getting on the two minute. We're getting a rotation. So for those of you that have not taken the trade, uh, you you could still take it here into the 70 or you could place the stop under 40 right now. It's a two minute. I'm not really happy with two minute setups uh, because they can often fail, but this is a strong structure. So the Dow is the strongest right here. This is why this morning I've mentioned some of the stocks that are within the Dow that are stronger. NASDAQ is participating as well to the upside. There we go. We have 11 points into target one. Nice momentum. We're trading above the 4H bar we're trading that one hour inside and out was the one that i liked about it let's see if we get traction we have a high 91 currently NASDAQ would have been nice here, <laughs> hindsight. But anyways, uh, we call this, I mean, I didn't take it, but I've mentioned that I like it above 57, 56 to 57. It worked out really nice. Beautiful formation. Once you have an eye for these and the inflection points are all set. I don't like Russell going uh, lower here because it's uh it's gonna impact. It it's gonna have a negative impact. All right, so it's breaking below the first level of support into the ninety. It's trading there right now, and the next level of support in Russell is eighty. Oh, yeah. 90, yeah, 90 and 80, exactly what we said in the pre-market game plan. And it's not showing any signs of reversal. Uh, it may stall a little bit It's uh, because of the 90 here. Let's see if we get a reversal in Russell, because if we get that reversal in Russell, our indices are going to start moving higher. Keep in mind, the indices are moving higher without Russell. And typically you want to see synchronicity. Yeah, exactly. Joe, it's a cell, cell signal into the 200 SMA. Okay, here it is. All right, into resistant, and it's in the middle of that crappy range on the weekly. And uh, this is a strong reversal candle. But here's the thing: you have re you have you have support here into the eighteen hundred. You have support here into the ninety. You have support here into the eighties. 
So this formation is so much stronger than any kind of minor support right now. So you have all these pivot highs that represent support for current price action because these pivots are so important right now. Why? Well, because you're getting a reversal on the daily, even though the weekly is choppy, but you have low, you have a confirmation of a higher low. So you had the swish up, pull back. You had the swish up, pull back. So you're making higher highs. So this is still to the bullish list, but it's still unsettled today because it needs to kind of like, you know, start forming something, but it's not forming anything. I was looking at the five minute because if the five minute would get a rotation, then we would start moving higher, but it has a lot of resistance above. So now the path to least resistance would be lower to the 80s. It's very hard to trade in the divergent market. You have three indices that are strong and you have one that is weak. And I never like to stay in trades. <laughs> like I feel so super uncomfortable right now because you we have this divergency. And like I said, if we're getting a little bit of green and Russell, these guys are going to start flying. Those of you guys that have smaller accounts, I don't want you guys to hold anything. Um, and transform this pop up into a loser. You can consider. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but this is for small accounts. Can bring your stops to break even, because we're getting. If we get a continuation lower in Russell, these are going to be ju just an idea. Just an idea. We have really wide protective stops all the way here at the bottom of the pivots, and we don't have to worry as much. But if things are changing, and if Russell is still not going to recover and turn around, it may impact reversal into these indices right here. It's the in sync rule. Not going to be funny, fun. Exactly, Phyllis. And it's 10 a.m. At 10 a.m., you're always going to see pullbacks. Not always, but this would be the time for it. Lori, that 2000, yeah, that 2000 can come even today if it just develops strength here because apparently there are a lot of buyers that are just, I mean, I'm not seeing a lot of pullback reaction from this minor resistance level here into the uh, 85. I'm not seeing a lot of reaction. We should have seen pullback on five minute and we're not seeing it. We're seeing like a strong hold currently. Yeah. I mean, any kind of pause means strength. NASDAQ still continues strong. We have uh, neutral ES. We have a uh, pullback in YM. We just need to see if Russell is going to turn around right now into 10 o'clock. Mark is stalling. All right, my. All right, we're getting some topping tails. Sellers are starting to come in uh, and overall pattern was still in a range. We're tackling, so here's, here's our bullish area and we're back into the range, right? So we will treat our trade as, the, as a range, right? Because it is a range, right? Chop, chop. 
and we can't do anything to it. So you're looking here as well, trading in the range, broke out a little bit. So may have the possibility to take back, to go back into these highs. NASDAQ on the 1H. Nice pop up into the 900. Still nice bottoming tail here, holding above this. NASDAQ is still quite uh, bullish at this point. It's not bearish. All right, and we're seeing a little reversal right now in RTY. Here it is. Intel gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it's just extending gains, isn't it? Almost 4% up today, 3.75. Amazing. It should not even stop until 45 bucks. That's the next resistance. All right. We may have some sandwiches developing, confirming the bullish above levels. NASDAQ, if you want to take some trades in NASDAQ, if you have not participated in my YM and s &P trade, NASDAQ is bullish over 900 and the stop goes eight, uh, below 80. And you're looking here, it is 900 popping. Uh, and you're looking for a continuation into the 920, 940. Uh, same with S&P. If S&P gets above 27, it's going to have room to move a little bit higher. We have a target at 30, and then we have a target uh, over 40, okay? So we have 30 and 40, so basically from 10 to 10 points. Um, and here we have uh, to get back over this 90 to tackle that 100 target. We have 100 we have 120, which is just about here, and it's coinciding with this pivot. So that's pretty cool when we have that, but that can be a problem because uh, the the we could have a rejection area here because we have double resistance. We have that 120 from the target, plus we have this pivot. So this could be significant here. We'll see. Uh, the more we rotate a little bit and the more we see a little bit of green and stall and Russell and keep in mind, Russell is still trading between 80 and 90 huge support zones that we have into a, and their minor support. So once again, they're favoring the upside. Let's see how it develops. Let's see who's in control. Uh, Bonnie. What's my favorite ETF in NASDAQ? Qs. I'm trading the Qs all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely with the order flow. I never watch the order flow. Just watch price action. Okay, new low and Russell. This is not good. We're seeing some topping tails formation in NASDAQ and S&P as well. Uh, why I'm still holding the green. By the way, I'm looking at the market, Microsoft screaming higher with the brand new high up $5.60 today alone. Makes me happy. Uh, UNH incredibly strong. Um, over 543 wants to break out. It has been consolidating there like forever. It has been testing this area for a month. So once it's going to pop, it's going to rip. Like I said, IBM with a brand new high. We still have strength in financials, JP Morgan, Bank of America, American Express, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Wells Fargo is weak. Keep in mind the stop, the stop is 4507, not 17. 4507 is the stop in SP. 
I've mentioned these pivots. Ishan, I mentioned these pivots like probably 50 times already. You see my cursor? That's where the stop is. Did I type it in wrong? Okay, so it's 4507. I mentioned it on the mic several times. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yes, yeah, stop. But you have to pay attention to what I'm saying, right? I showed it on the charts. I said below these pivots, I'm not going to use this pivot. I said I'm going to go for the overnight low right here, 4507. All right. We have some interesting setups here. So if Wyme is going to take out the 65 right now, we're ripping higher. If not, we're testing the lows. S&P, if it gets above 26, 27 right now, it's going to scream higher to 30, 32, 35, going into 40. Thanks, Michael. Yes, I confirmed the stop, 4507. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the heads up. All right. Yeah, earlier. When I went, before we got into the trade. Okay. So Russell coming in, let's uh, recalibrate these charts. Tiny momentum reversal, squeeze potentially in oil. You wanna do it, the entry is 73.95. The stop is gonna be below this low, so 70. And target is going to be $74.20. It's a possible squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. That's a doji in that's an inside doji that we're having in oil. 73, 93.94 for the entry, stop under 70. I'm I'm not loving it because I see it still has room for lower, at least it's 73.45 ish. But it's not like a shorting zone. That's huge, Michael. Huge down. Huge. All right. And oil is making a new low. So scratch that rotation, scratch that squeeze. Yeah, a bunch of talking heads. Uh, Daniel, thanks for the heads up. For everybody in here. Yeah, exactly. That's the only thing why I'm happy about oil. Keith, let's go to 60. Um, Yeah, Michael, I get gas at Costco. I'm relatively close to a Costco, so I get uh, gas at Costco. 
And one of the reasons uh, why I get it there is, you know, um, they check their machine. So you're likely not to have any surprises with your credit card, with your data being stolen. All right, RTY coming into that 80 uh, support zone. Let's see if that's going to hold. Why I'm still trading within the last hour range, the high and the low. The low is into the 940s and the high is into the 35.090. So we're still trading inside back into the 35,000. I'm telling you guys, here's the here's my take on it. And we talked about this, view the recordings we talked on day one. It's obvious that I think they want to keep YM at 35,000. They want to keep S&P at 4,500. I don't know what the deal was with Russell. They may want to punch it lower today or they may want to take it lower. Let me take a look at my side at the technicals. Um. Here's what I think. Tomorrow, Russell is uh may finish the day uh and may want to be pinned at 1750 or 1800. 1750 or 1800. That's that's where uh I believe Russell is gonna get pinned into. Uh NASDAQ is hard to tell. I think they still want NASDAQ at 16,000. And uh, uh, S&P and the Dow, they're still there. So they want to, you know, th they're going to play with it back and forth. And these are algos back and forth, back and forth. But ultimately, I think it's going to be 35. Uh, keep in mind that we're looking to do some damage control in YM very soon. If we have the opportunity to reduce our price, it's going to be like a separate trade. Just another R. We're back to 35,000 in the Dow. The 15 minute and the five minute don't look that great because they are issuing some continuation for lower. So the price action actually needs to get above 35,020 in order to start, you know, kind of digesting back into the 50s. Russell back into that 80, shopping around oil. Yes, I was going to say mention uh, oil, Daniel. Uh, squeeze to 74.20. Exactly, Lori. Squeeze to 74.20. Now we wait. Alex, I don't talk much about NASDAQ. I just mentioned that NASDAQ is stronger. What do you want to what do you want me to say about NASDAQ? It's doing the same thing, synchronized move as YM and SP. I provided levels, the bullish above levels. What what do you want to know?
Yeah, but uh, ask, ask the question and I'm going to answer it. Oh, you mean what is NASDAQ? I don't talk about Na NQ. I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's go back to trading here. So we are into a floor support in RTY. Floor support in RTY, which means that we this if this holds, we may get pop-ups. Pop up, pop up, pop up. Lori, are you holding GC for swing? Because it looks like, so I didn't get on that daily break over 80, 82, 85. Uh, but it looks very good now. And it looks like if it takes out the 2000, it's going to 2020. All right, it's 1021. We get a one, two minute rotation. The five minute rotation is over 35010 in YM. I'm still not doing anything to add here. I'm not, there's a lot of pressure all the way into the 35040. I don't know if I should be that aggressive. Oh yeah, Lori, I was going to ask you if you want to, if you're keeping it for a swing, because if it takes out the 2000, it's just flying, but I don't know with option expiration tomorrow. I mean, it shouldn't affect gold at all. Cool. All right, we got the five minute rotation. Um, five minute rotation as well in S and P. This could be an ad place. Could be. I'm not doing an ad just yet. Not just yet. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the structure in these indices now. All right, we have the lows. These are the lows in the indices right now, okay? If, and by this rotation that already happened in the Dow, but punching it higher, we formed another higher low, okay? And that's before 1030, so this is really good. If this low is gonna hold into 1030, the price action can't go back up. This is the higher low confirmation here. This would be the ad. I'm not adding yet. I don't know. I just don't have a good feel. The market is too fleecy right now. But this may be, a, uh, this is a buy opportunity right here, an ad opportunity. So if you took the trade with one R, you can add another R here and you could place your stop here for the second R. Uh, so we have the low and we have the higher low and this may be conducive for a punch back into the bullish above and over the bullish above. NASDAQ has the low and needs to get over this purple area right here to confirm the higher low. And if it does, it creates that twin tower, beautiful rotation, 180 rotation with a higher low. So this would be significant. Why? Uh, because by 1030, when all everything is all set, we have a trend, right? Because we have low and a higher low, even though the context is horrible. Now here's the rotation with a squeeze that is just about to happen over 82.3, 82.4, uh, that can take the price into this level right here. So I, I would say 87, this would be 87. 
right here, the area where it could go. All right. In the meantime, we're still in the trades. I haven't done anything. So holding beautifully so far. So far, so good. All right. Everybody good? All right, here you have the rotation. Okay, so about 85, 87, not much room. And you can see here, I'm not going to take it because it's not that extended lower on the five. But this can bring, remember what I said earlier, if we're getting good momentum in Russell, the rest of the indices are going to power through. Let's see if we do this. If we get the price and rustle into 84.85, we're going to smash these levels right here. And as you're getting to option expiration, they, uh, uh, it's going to get boring and messy. And yes, if you want, you can take NASDAQ. If you're not participating in the Dow or S&P, yes, you could take NASDAQ. This is the buy area, 83 to 85 acceptable entries, 86, wherever into this area right here. And your stop goes below the most recent pivot formation into the 44. Russell, nice. Russell, nice. I'm not a Russell, just... Quick disclaimer here, I'm not in Russell, but looking at the squeeze, squeeze in oil, it's right into the 20s, guys. This this is mission accomplished in, uh, in oil. From this point on, watch momentum. Tom, it's all about balance in the market and the market likes to be in sync most of the time, the market doesn't like to be um, into um, divergency. So that means an index lower, one higher, one neutral. The market likes to have structural strength or structural weakness. And if there is one index that has structural uh, weakness, for example, in this case today, Russell, it will influence the trajectory of the other indices. Yeah, Mike, that's a good question. I basically want to see it above these highs and I want to see this full cone completion before I do that. Because there could still be some fleecing going on. Sure. Typically, once you get the rotation and we have the rotation here and we had the one, two, three, four, and we had the uh, fifth bar rotate above the high of the prior, typically you want to raise your stop. Because if the price goes back down, it's obvious that it may start challenging the prior low. So you can see here that the reason why I went for that stop is because it's the bottom of the base. You guys see 07 right here? So this, these trades, if you recall earlier, and you can review them on the recording, I said they are hourly ranges, and these trades are not going to be the quick in and out, the instant gratification type of trades. They're going to take a longer time, meaning they can take into the end of the day, or they can even continue into tomorrow. Yes, Jeff, if you listened to me when I did the parameters for the trade, I said 4507. When I typed it into the room, I typed in 4517 
It was an accident. I repeated the level on the microphone. Everybody in here can tell you this. I repeated the level on the microphone a million times. I even showed it on the technical chart why we need to have the stop into the 4507. Because again, and I'm repeating it again right now, is because we have the lower pivot from the overnight trading session. It is a range. We're not going to cut it in half. We got to give it all the way to the bottom. Okay, does that make sense? Pay attention to the room. Pay attention to what I'm saying in the room. Close the chat. Just close, shut it off. Close the chat. Just pay attention. That's why you're here. Everybody's here to learn, to pay attention to what, what we're trading. Don't pay attention to what everybody's typing into the room. That's noise, okay? Pay attention to just what I'm saying. Okay, by the way, there may be a, another opportunity in NASDAQ because NASDAQ is doing a sandwich. So if the price gets above 90, it could start moving higher. And in this case, we can look for a stop into the 865. 865, that would be the stop. Sandwich formation, <laughs> possible into YM. So we're gonna be adding some stuff here. I'm not going to add an SMP because SMP is already there, but I am going to add NYM. Forty two, or this could be like a separate trade. Zero forty two. And the stop for this segment is going to be under 980. So it's going to be exactly 978. So what we're doing, the strategy here is the 15 minute doji. 15 minute doji high low with the higher low segment that we talked before. Over high, stop the low, same targets. Ultimately, target one in this one is going to be our entry. So it's going to be 0 0.65. And then we go into 35, 100, 35, 120, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to keep this on the 15 minute. This is key here. 15 minute has already launched into S&P. So let's see, it, it already rotated, it already took out back, uh, it already took out uh, the purple area. So what that means is that it could go above these highs that were already formed here into the 26th. Let's see if it's gonna do it. So S&P not adding, but YM it's an add or separate trade. It's another R. No trigger yet. Russell textbook reaction off of that upper 85 level went to 86 and rotates back down. Here's the deal. If Russell gets over 86, it needs to bring 86.2, 86.5. The whole market is going to start moving higher. It's going to push the market higher.
All right. Oil into a cell setup on the five. Let's check it out on the 15. This could be a sandwich down. So under 62, super bearish, super, super bearish oil. Fifteen minutes sandwich down under sixty super bearish. The one hour is struggling to form a doji. The thirty minute looks very interesting and is fighting for that trigger. See, it didn't really complete the setup. It needs to get over thirty five, thirty four, and here's the scoop: if the price action and watch it. If the price action is going to get over 74.35, it's going to squeeze very close to 75 to 75. 75 is the target. And if it doesn't, so this is the bullish case. This is the bullish case. So $74.35 over. And if it gets to that point, it's going to move higher. And if it breaks below 62, which is pretty much this low right here, actually needs to break 60. So if it breaks below 60, it has room for lower. Keep in mind that oil is into, so the way the New York trading session is reading it is into oversold. So you may see that 30 minute pop up. You're already getting, oh, and there's an opportunity on the five as well. Sandwich up. So you have a sandwich down on oil. Mention the barometers. The sandwich up is over that 33. So you need to have this 30 minute rotation happen for the big, sorry, this is the one hour. Um, you have to have this trigger for the price to go into that 75. Does that make sense? Uh, Denise, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. For example, here onto the 15 minute, it's a pattern. You have bears, you have red, green, red. And if the bears take out the, uh, the bullish low bar, then you're getting a sandwich down. Very powerful strategy. Super amazing strategy. By the way, Joe traded the sandwich on the 15 minute. This is how powerful it was. Ta-da. This is a bull sandwich. This is a bear sandwich in development. This is, this has already been completed. This is still, you have to have the patience to wait for the triggers. We teach it in our course. And the beauty about it is that once you um, learn the patterns, the strategies that we use, all you have to do is wait until you have a candlestick formation that looks exactly the same like the one that we teach. And once you see it, you apply it, you take the trade. You don't see it, you don't take the trade. It's so super simple. All right, so uh, 15 minutes throughout. Let me put this uh, Dow, uh, this uh, NASDAQ on the 15 minute as well. We just have a lot of chop going on right now. Let's take a quick look at Russell on the 30 minute, 30 minute inside bar. One hour, still has room for lower. So keep in mind, oil is overextended. It's oversold. New York trading session signal of oversold. I actually like it. I like it a lot.
Here's the oil trade. $74.35 is the entry. $73.60 uh, is the stop. $74.50, 60 cents, and 80 cents are the target. I'm going to put an alert so you guys can see where the entry is. And the stop to alleviate any kind of typos. All right. Why is that alert not coming up? Wow, that's weird. There's something wrong here. Anyways, so you have the parameters in the room. Not going to bother with that. All right, so we're still into S&P. We're still into uh, the Dow. No reason to exit yet. Keep the stops intact. Keep the stops in. Those represent 1R of our trade. And we have a brand new trade in oil. $74.35 is the entry 7360 under, just give it a little bit of room. I usually put my stop at least um, into the 58, 7358. And I put my stop after I get into the trade. Target 7450, 7460, 7480. We're still holding the bottom ranges of the one hour from the overnight trading session. And I'm only taking oil because it, uh, we have the oversold, uh, the over, uh, the over, oversold signal. Vita, you switch when, where you have the pattern, where the pattern formation is at. So you go back and forth, back and forth to where you have the pattern formation. But typically, it's advisable that once you are trading outside of the power hour, you want to make sure that you eliminate all of that garbage, that noise. But don't do it automatically. It's like, oh my gosh, it's 10.30. I got to switch it to 15 minutes. No, you, you got, it has to make sense. All right, so I'm going to take a quick look here at the market and see what is going on in the stock market to see if we have any chances of continuation into YM or ES. All right, so that YM trade that I have uh, uh, wanted to add did not come to fruition. To, to fruition. So that 15 minute trigger that we had at 42 never triggered. So that you cancel, okay? You can see that it's trading below the low and never triggered the high. Everybody clear on that? Never triggered the high, never went to 42. Never went doji up and continuation, all right? So you scratch that, okay? You scratch that. So that ad, that YM second trade canceled. All right, so that's canceled. We're still in the original trade from this morning from the purple line, purple line in S&P and in YM. Once again, S&P stop 4507. Why 4507? Because it's the low of the overnight, okay? And we have YM here. 
940 for the stop. If the price action is going to rotate, actually it's going to take out the 40s, 42s, 43s here. If it's going to rotate, not sure if it's going to rotate with this Russell that is super weak. Okay, see the sandwich kind of down here. Um, and if it's going to rotate, we may have a chance, but... The next support in RTY is 67. Then we have 63. Then we have 50. 1750. They may want to push it. I mean, here's the unknown of option expiration that you don't know where they're going to pin it. They're usually going to pin it at or around whole numbers but we have uh, a mid number into the seven, uh, 1750 and we have a huge confluence support level there so we'll see i'm still looking for an ad by the way but i don't think we're gonna have ads so that sucks but let's take a look at the market and see where we're at okay so uh, Dow stocks are definitely strong. Okay. And, uh, we did mention, I'm not going to repeat what we have just said, but, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, even a semiconductor sideways, but they're strong. Google finally extending higher. Cisco moving up, which is good from the gap down. Adobe holding yesterday's parameters. Intel is through the moon. Qualcomm ranging but bullish. Semiconductors, Micron and AMD holding very well. We have Starbucks with a new high today. Netflix with a new high today. Okay. All right. So basically, we have a stalling price action. We don't have any um, kind of uh, reaction at this point. We just have the lows that are, the overnight lows that are continuing to hold. And by the way, gold here on the 15 minute, this could be a fade counter trend all the way to $1982, uh, uh, 19, 1982. 1982 okay not gonna take it but just watch it okay it's a reversal pattern it's overextended it's into resistance into that 1990 Uh, DJ, these are futures indices on my screen. The Dow has 30 stocks under it, S&P 500 stocks under it, and NASDAQ 100 stocks under it. Russell 2,000 stocks under it. So the way the stocks and the sectors behave under each index is going to impact how these indices behave. These are powerful, extremely powerful indices. All right, so let's see what else do we have here. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick scan and see where we have some power. 
All right. So, um, we still have some pressure, uh, from want to take, take a quick look at Walmart. Yeah. Walmart is still weak. The reality is that Walmart has not made a new low uh, and it's holding the low from, from the 1030. So it's kind of like that 1030 zone into the 157. And if this area is going to hold, then we're going to see, and if obviously Walmart is going to start popping up, then we may see some kind of um, uh, rotation happening. But still Walmart is down 7%, 7.4%. Cisco still down uh, 11%, but coming in, lovely bottoming tail uh, currently on the daily, but the day's not over yet. Uh, we're seeing uh, Dollar Tree lower, APA lower, Halliburton, Halliburton looks bad. Halliburton looks bullish around 36. It's trading at 37 right now. So that's a key level, 36. If it if that holds, it's going to rotate into that point. But um, EOG lower, Kroger weak, Valero weak. So we have we have some weakness here in some of the energy stocks. I don't like weakness in energy stocks because that's gonna, that's not good for SMP. So, like I said earlier, uh, Walmart and Costco are lower. Dollar General, Target, Dollar Tree, they're lower. Tesla is lower as well, and the oil, uh, energy. So that means that the Dow may be under pressure still. We're not seeing any rotation in, into these uh, sectors. So that means that things are going to get choppy. What is strong right now is, uh, let's see. We have Microsoft, Oracle. Verizon, Netflix, Google. Um, insurance. Insurances are up. That's well, not really going to affect the market that, <laughs> that much. Utilities are up. Very mixed market from what I'm seeing right now. Mixed market. And it should be like this. It should be like this. Yeah, I agree. Oil, 30 minute, not looking great. I agree. 30 minute does not look great. Here's the 30 minute. No trigger above this high here. Above 74.35. Doesn't have the power to, to go, it seems. All right, tomorrow we're probably gonna have the same uh, day like we have today. Brand new low in RTY, this is not good because it's gonna create a weaker environment. YMS and P NASDAQ are barely holding the overnight lows. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier, um, counter trend in GC is in motion right now. Yeah, I'm looking through the energy sector really weak. XOM, CVX, COP, EOG, Oxy, uh, DVN, HES, EQT, MRO, APA. I mentioned APA before. 
Pfizer is down, uh, Amgen, uh, Guild, CVS, very mixed market, very mixed. Okay, so like I said this morning when we, um, when I came on the mic and did the pre-market game plan and when we got into these trades and I uh, put these levels up for you guys. And by the way, we can teach you in our course how to trace these levels. Um, so you have confidence in your trading. So you know that once the price gets into that area, you don't short because that's a very strong institutional buy signal. So I mentioned when we got into these trades that these are not going to be like quick trades. They're going to take some time to develop. That's why we have uh, the stops that are wider and we still don't know whether they're going to be working or not. So we're going to wait on that. And once again, the stop in YM is 940. Overnight low, S&P 4507, overnight low. Overnight low zones. All right, cancel oil trade. Cancel the oil trade. We did not have a trigger and therefore we're canceling the trade. All right, since we're uh, you know not doing anything, I'm open for questions. If you guys have any kind of questions, we still have these trades open let's see if they work or not hard stops recommended on all of these trades now's the time any question any question that you have All right, uh, first question. I'm so confident after your three day and earlier presentation and I wonder if I need any training. Well, if you have made money before and you're consistently profitable, right now you don't change a thing. You're on your way to being, you're a millionaire in training. Uh, but if you're not consistently profitable, trust me, these three days are not gonna make much difference. You need a lot of training. And I'm not just saying that. You know, I'm, you could get your training for wherever you see fit. Uh, but trust me, in trading, you need a lot of education. Um, some of the stuff for risk management and position investing can be read. We teach that in our courses. I can't recommend you a book uh, or two or three. Um, I can recommend a book, for example. Um, I don't know. Let me think. Um, any book by Ben Tharp is a good book. I have read all of them and they're good. But other than that, it's going to take you, I, I mean, it's going to take you a long time to, you know, kind of like get your, um, get you into the right system. All I can say is that keep your, size into R's. Keep your size, for example, one R. Never risk more than one R in a trade, for example. So that's a great question, DJ. Uh, always position size. Learn how to position size. There, you know, try to find some literature out there if you don't want to take our course uh, into position size for futures is a little bit more challenging than trading than uh, than in stocks. Never trade more than 1% or 2% of your account, depending on your risk tolerance. I trade only 1% and I'm fine with it. And um, other than that, you know, you should be, you should be good. Uh, budget, also budget for your day. So for example, I budget for all my days. I budget for about five trades in a day. Okay. Uh, and all right, sorry, I'm getting some alerts here. Okay. So I budget for, uh, five trades a day, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to take five trades in a day, because if I don't see an environment suitable for trading, I'm not even going to take one trade. 
So I'm going to keep my R. So I'm keeping my, my risk. I'm not applying my risk to the market. If I see a choppy environment, for example, if right now I'm looking at the market, I would not take a trade. We did have strong momentum this morning in S&P. We have strong momentum in YM, but right now momentum is going south. So we're not having a strong momentum. So if I was, let's say if I wanted to trade the afternoon, which I don't and don't ever trade the afternoon, okay? Maybe once every two to three years, <laughs> I don't know. I don't like to trade the afternoons. And there's a reason for that, that I'm gonna circle back on that. But have a system in place and say, hey, I'm gonna take three trades a day. And if I lose on those three trades, then I'm done for the day. Okay, so you could write this down. 1% is one R and position size. Because if you don't position size, you're going to be all over the place. One time you're going to lose five points in ES. One time you're going to lose 10 points. One time you're going to lose this and that. And the amount is going to be different each and every single time if you don't position size. For example, if you take all the trades with one contract and say, I'm going to go in, I'm going to take all the trades with one contract. You're going to have, a, a if you're a really good trader, yes, you're going to come ahead. You could look at my track performance. But that's not the way to trade. You should be risking the same amount on each and every single trade. So if you risk $500 on a trade, you risk $500 on a trade until your account grows at least with 50%. Your account grows with 50%, then you recalculate your position size. And one other thing that I wanted, you know, to alleviate over trading, okay? So there's a really quick fix for over trading. OK, number one, if you make money in the morning, the morning is literally the best time to make money because that is the power hour. Things are very clear. Things are very obvious, especially for the New York trading session. When you start, you know, you have a clean slate and not only that, but you have the institutional power that is creating the setups and the strategies to apply at different timings into the market that I use. And trading becomes super simple. Because if you have the trade, you have the pattern, you have a trade, you don't have the pattern, then you're going to have to wait and don't take the trade. Just like this morning, for example, I had the pattern in YM and SMP. I took the trade, period. I, it's non-negotiable. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it's a clear parameter that I trade on. And it's a strategy that I teach. It's a strategy that I take. And you're going to win more times than you lose. I have a batting average per year that I'm going to show you in, uh, in, well, in a little bit. That, <laughs> that is literally to envy. So that matters a lot because when you, and, and by the way, it, let, let me circle back to over trading. So when you're over trading, okay, I said there's a quick fix for that. How? budget for the day. For example, if you have, if you allow yourself three trades a day, if you make money on the first trade, and if you see that you have a really crappy environment for the rest of the day, stop it. Don't trade. Don't think, oh, I believe it's going to do this. I believe it's going to do that. The belief system has nothing to do with the market. Structure analysis has to do with the market. Entry, stops, targets, that has to do with the market. Market context, the interaction between the indices, the interaction between um, divergency. By the way, there's a short squeeze happening here. There's a doji uh, over 78.6 uh, 78 with the stop below the doji. It could go back up into this cluster of 84 to 85. All right, just highlighting. I'm not going to take it. Obviously, I'm talking right now. But over trading is a really huge issue for traders that do not, that lack trading education. Once you have the trading education, you can't over trade because you see it's so evident. You see it out there. And once you know what to do, you're going to say like, I'm not going to take this trade because that's dumb, right? I know that that's not, not the right timing in the market. Okay, there's a good timing in the market and there's a bad timing in the market. And once you know the market timing, you know how to make and how to uh, uh, how to, let's say, uh, take the setups and fit them in your strategy. 
But with over trading, right? You have one trade, you made money. If you see that the market environment is really crappy, don't take the second trade. And especially around doldrums, just stay away from the doldrums. Come back when the doldrums are over. And if the momentum is still intact, see if there's a strategy that meets your trading plan and then to execute it according again to the parameters from your trading plan. Make sure that the trade fits your trading plan. Where's the trade? Uh, where's the price trading at? Is it above, below, support, resistance? Where is it at? Okay. And if you know how to answer, and if you answer all those questions, then you are going uh, to take the trade or not, but it has to fit your trading plan. Everybody in here needs to have a trading plan. There's no exception, no exception. And I'm telling you right now, when I first started day trading, like 23 years ago, I didn't have a trading plan and I didn't believe in a trading plan that will be, you know, in front of me on a piece of paper. I thought, you know what? I have everything in my head. Like, I believe that I was so smart that I had everything in my head. And I was wrong because you need to have it on paper. And once I had my trading plan on paper and saying, hey, you're going to trade from this hour to this hour and you're going to look for this kind of setup and this kind of setup, you're not going to, you know, go outside of anything else than what is in your trading plan. Your trading plan should uh, determine whether you're gonna take a trade or not and how your management is. So if you had a good morning, bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's another day. The power hour is the best to trade. I'm not the only one saying that. Everybody on the planet that is a professional trader is gonna tell you that. That is the uh, strongest momentum into the market. The second thing is that if you really feel compulsive enough to take another trade, for example, outside of the doldrums, so let's say starting with two o'clock or three o'clock or something like that, or you were trading like literally the, uh, the RAM time or something like that, whatever you're trading, okay, just make sure that if you made, for example, $500 in the morning, you're not going to risk that $500 and go home with the loss, right? Like my mentor would say, like an idiot, right? Don't go home like an idiot. Or go like, oh, but I made money. I lost money. And, and if you really feel itchy and need to take that second trade, use half of what you made. Not even because what happens is that oftentimes in markets like this, in this context, you're not going to make one R. OK, there are markets where you're going to make 10 hours or five hours or three hours or two hours. But in sideways ranging markets, you're not going to make one. one uh, you're you're going to probably make one hour or less than one hour. So if that's the case and if you made, let's say, less than one hour, let's say your risk per trade is a thousand dollars, but you managed the trade and you made only five hundred dollars. Don't risk another thousand dollars full R on a trade. Just risk half. Right. Just risk half um, if you um, if you want. Or the way I do it, I risk half of what I made in that day, okay? So if I made, my R is $1,000, but I only made half an R, so I made $500. I'm going to risk half of that $500 because at the end of the day, I don't want to be that idiot that goes home empty-handed after a whole days of work, okay? So I want to make sure that I lock some money in. I don't go with a big red dot home. What I truly recommend to you guys in order to get into the consistency game is to have a printout calendar and use two markers, a red and a green, okay? A red and a green. Whenever you have a green day, even if it's a dollar, just put a green dot because that's how you train your brain towards consistency. And this way, you're, you're not gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I'm giving all my money back. Don't be a victim of giving your money back. Okay, this is a whole, uh, this is this is you know a really big thing. So DJ, that's a really great question that you have. Risk management is one of the most important things that you need to have for your uh, for your trades. The entries are not that important. The stops are not that important. The how you manage the trade, 
We teach in our course trailing system, how you trail and trade. Because what happens if you have a stop? You get stopped out. That's part of the plan. But what happens if the price action hits target one? You need to know how to react to target one. Is it coming with velocity? Is it coming with what? Is it hitting what? So you know what to do. Are you going to stay in the trade? That needs to be in your plan. And under what conditions are you going to sit in the trade? Under what conditions are you going to exit partial, scale partial from the trade? What are you going to do when you hit target two? What are you going to do when you hit target three? How do you read the market context? So trading is not only, for example, oh, it's hitting the 50 simple moving average or this and that. Oh my God, if that was the case, oh my God, I would be retired right now. <laughs> I'm actually considering myself retired, FYI. I literally consider myself retired because what I do, I don't consider work, okay? So this is the number one thing that you need. And this stops your over trading habit because at some point in time, everybody went through over trading. You're talking to me. I was over trading when I first started day trading stocks 23 years ago. I was over trading and I was trading a lot. I was putting in like 20 trades in a day. No kidding. I was living my zip code was the one minute chart and the two minute charts. Okay. Until I smartened up. Until I got more training and more training and more training and more training. And everybody kept on, all my mentors kept on telling me, you know, you got to look for this. You got to look for that. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to, okay. So there's, there are some simple things that you could do. All right. All right. So, uh, another question that is really amazing, how to hold winning trades longer. And the answer to, to this question is to have a sound management, money management plan in place. We teach trailing system. We teach three trailing systems that are going to keep you in the trade longer, okay? That are going to keep you in the trade as long as you need, uh, as long as the price action is active. So when you have a stop, you have a stop. That's no big deal, right? It works or it doesn't. Not all the trades that we take are going to be winning trades. But the majority of them, and I'm going to show you some stats, yes, they are winning trades, okay? The majority are winning trades. So the most important thing to do is to focus on what works in the market in different contexts. But how do you hold winning trades longer? Again, have a good, robust management plan in place, and you need to respect it like I do. Like, I don't trade outside of my trading plan. I don't trade outside of what I teach. Because what I teach is what I do. Okay. Um, is U USO is the ETF for oil and uh, CL is futures contract is the futures contract. Uh, they kind of like move in sync, but in USO you're going to see some um, uh, some gaps. Because uh, futures contracts obviously trade overnight and USO does not. All right, Al Boris, I'm curious. I have heard you mention that the 10 EMA is a reversal time and why. Uh, 10 EMA, uh, 10, uh, there are several reversal times in the market. There are minor reversal times and major reversal times. So what happens is that every, so for example, if you're in a trade and the momentum is strong from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, there's the tendency to take profit. So that is what's creating the major, that is actually a major reversal time and a major inflection time. In very strong markets and in news-driven markets, 10 o'clock is not going to be highly impacted. However, you need to pay attention to and start trailing using, uh, using one of the trailing techniques that you use. Uh, to make sure that you lock in some profit. So that's really great to know when these uh, reversal times are at.
Oh, the name is Van Tharp. Basically, any book is, is good. They're very fake, very good. All right. Uh, they're not going to teach you how to trade, but they're going to give you an idea about the psychology behind it. All right. All right, just going through some questions. I know some of them I have already answered. All right. Uh, by the way, guys, we stopped out of YM and SMP. Uh, John, thanks so much for posting it in the room. I just got to, <laughs> to that post. Oh my gosh, there's so many questions in here and a lot of chat. So, okay, here it is. I caught up. Uh, all right. To where I, um, all right. To where I was. Oh, thanks so much, Ralph. I saw you guys already have posted it. Thank you, Skip. Thanks so much. Hey, Lise, how much money have I made uh, yesterday and the day before? I bet a boatload of money with our trades. Hey, Lise, the prop account is not, the prop account is not with Thinkorswim. You could go on our website and you can find out more details. I can share with you that later. Randy, you found, okay. Okay, so I'm pretty much caught up here. All right, uh, let's move into something. We still have about 10 minutes left. So S&P and um, uh, the Dow have stopped. All right, two stops out of how many trades that we won? <laughs> okay, all right, let's see here. All right. All right, let's go through this and then I'm going to take you to explain something else. All right. All right, here we go. All right, guys. So how many of you guys, I'm going to ask you, first, I'm going to ask you some questions. How many of you guys have a trading plan, written trading plan? Type of one. Written trading plan, type of one. But be honest, guys, you're honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. So I see a lot of you guys do not have a trading plan. Maybe some of you guys have a trading plan. So question number two, how is the trading plan working for you? For good, type of two. For not good, type of three. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. 
Three, because still go against out of the fear. Lori. Lori P. Because we have another Lori here as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you're nervous. I love it. I love it, guys, because you're honest and you're putting yourself out there. This is how you learn. I did this a lot when I first started trading in the trading room that I was at. Okay, so Lori P, fear. And if you if you feel fearful and if you're nervous, it's because you don't have an allocated budget for the day. Have an allocated budget. Have an allocated budget and say, this is my account. I'm going to risk 1% on each trade. Whatever that amount is, I'm going to take full size of micros depending on the position sizing. Once you know how to do that, fear is out the door. Hey, Agnes, thank you. I think that fear comes from not having a structure. It's not even psychological. Well, a Obviously, psychologists saying, oh, fear, you got to be aware of fear. Fear can be good. Fear can be this. I'm telling you guys, if you stick to simple rules, like having a system, having a position size, having a good risk, you don't have any fear. Why would you fear? When you put on that trade, you're risking that amount, risking that amount. Let's say you're risking $50. OK, you're risking $50 on a trade. You're ready to lose that money. That's why you're risking it. You're ready to lose that money. So once you have that in your system, you're literally not going to be fearful because you know that that's a real possibility that you may lose that $50. On the let's say on the first trade, you know that one trade represents just a single trade in an ocean of trades that doesn't represent you it doesn't represent your career doesn't represent anything else okay doesn't represent anything else make sure you position size make sure you position size. the only thing that it's going to send you in the stratosphere or it's going to finish you as a trader it's easy you choose one or two, you choose to be in the game and make money or you choose to be wiped out. That's the difference of position sizing. Winner or loser. It's the only thing that is going to differentiate you. It's going to make you win. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. So um, have a trading plan. There are two things that traders need to have that never do. And I was there. I'm going to raise my hand because I was there. I didn't believe in having a written trading plan. And I didn't believe on having a journal. <laughs> believe me, I did not. But after four months into the process, thank God it didn't take me years, I realized and I was trained to have one and the importance of having one because you can fix all the problems, all the trading problems that you have if you have a journal. Because in a journal, you're going to write down the date, the time when you took the trade. Timing is so important because there are various market timings. So you know that if you went long, for example, you believe that, oh my gosh, I believe that, you know, for example, S&P is bullish and I already ran into 10 o'clock, but at 10 o'clock you have a reversal time. And then you took it long when you should have like did nothing, but wait for a pullback. Okay. Then guess what? You took it at the wrong time. You took the wrong, you took the trade at the wrong time. Okay. So having a journal with date, because you need to know what date it was, right? And what that date represents. Is it option expiration? Is it a date rich in data? 
Okay, so you have to have ample comments at the very end where you would have to write down the exact context. Just simple sentence, a sentence or two is enough. And then you write the symbol, write the direction, write your entry, write your stop, write your targets. Yesterday we talked about the importance of having multiple targets and why you need to have multiple targets. So once you have that, and the strat obviously a column with the strategy, right? That you have applied. I applied a buy setup or a sell setup or a sandwich or a doji reversal or this and that, whatever it is. Write it down. Because at the end of the month, you're going to draw a line and you're going to say, okay, whatever was, whatever trade that I took into 10 o'clock did not work. Scratch that out. I'm never going to do that again. Uh, whatever uh, buy off support or sell off resistance that I did into that time or 11 o'clock or 1130 during doldrums, that didn't work. Scratch it out. Scratch it. And see what you have left in that journal. And if you have some system that worked for you, just do only that. Just do only that. You need to be consistent. You can make a lot of money in the market if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can blow it up. Okay? So that's the only way you can have yourself as your personal mentor. Because that journal shows you exactly what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. You have to eliminate what you're doing wrong and keep only the things that, are, that you're doing right. Does that make sense, guys? So if you're trading the doldrums and you're constantly losing, 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 why trade the doldrums? Or if you're trading the afternoon and if you're having losses, 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 then some wins. But if you're having more losses than wins, then stop trading the afternoon. Trading more is not making more money. Trading more is actually losing more money because you're applying more risk. You're putting yourself out there. Okay. All right. I don't compound anything. <laughs> Never. That is that is the worst. Yeah, that that is the worst thing that you're going to do for your trading outboards. Yeah. No. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the track record, okay? Because if you have a journal you have accountability and you can see, okay, so I went from this to this. Okay, I went from this to this. Okay, this is, I don't have, um, um, obviously I took these snapshots um, yesterday, I, I think two days ago, two days ago. So uh, we made money Monday, Tuesday, which is not here because I took this slide and I had it here. Uh, all right. So this is where we're at. This is where I'm at. Okay. My starting capital and my account size is $500,000 and that's it. I don't need to grow my account anymore. So I'm at that phase where I don't need to grow my account. If you're in the phase where you need to grow your account, I definitely suggest don't take money out of it, but grow your account until you don't need to grow your account anymore. And that account becomes your working capital. Okay, at the end of the month, I take all my profits out. All my profits out. And I take it back from 500,000. That's it. So I take all the money out and leave my, I take all the profits out. That's it. All right, so this is January. This is accountability, okay? This is accountability. This is where I am right now. You can see here on the 14th. So that, that was two days ago, right here. Okay. The next slide is going to show you returns. And this is my personal account. Okay. Win ratio. I win 64.59% of the time. So more than half. Remember what I said yesterday? that if you have a good strategy, if you respect your position sizing 
and your R, you could actually have a win rate of under 40% and still make a killing into the market. That's right. But if you don't respect your management and your R and your position sizing, it's going to drain your account. It's going to go south. Instead of growing, it's going to go south. Okay. Steve, once again, it's based on position sizing. You're going to see it's based on position size. I don't trade standard three contracts. I don't trade three targets. It's trading. I wish trading was like that, but it's not like that. So my win rate, my win percent is 64.9. My loss, my losing trades are 30%. And this was a hard year to trade. I don't know about you guys, but it's hard. My break-even trades are 5.14. I had an open trade here because this was the Dow that I closed at 35,000. I told you guys earlier today in the morning that I closed my trade, my swing trade at 35,000. These are my accumulated returns, 220%, out of which... Accumulated return net, 214. Biggest profit, 22.65. Biggest loss, 3.8%. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. All right. Average return percentage per trade, 0.29. Do you know how much hedge funds are making? Between 6 and 8% on a good year. Look at mine. You're going to trade better than any professional on Wall Street. Average loser, 0 0.32. Average percentage win, 0 0.60. Again, look at the difference between the two. Longs, average percent on a long, 0 0.3. Average percent on a short, 0 0.16. Why? Because we're in a bull market. Commissions. These are my commissions. Don't think that I, I'm trading futures. I have better tax advantages as a futures professional trader, but I do pay commissions. Total commissions over 30,000, almost $30,000. <laughs> yeah, worth it. Worth it. Because these are my accumulated returns right here. Somebody was asking me about my losses, my wins, right? Okay, here are my winners. 1.5 million return on losses under 500,000. Okay, under 500,000. Profit to loss ratio, 1.6 by one. So I risk one R. For each R that I risk, I get 1.6. And this is from January. I could show you stats from 2010. Okay, so... Uh, all right. So if you guys are interested in joining the trading room, this is pretty much what you're going to be expecting. Um, I really would like to have a little bit, you know, I would, I'd like, if you join the trading room, I would like you to be a little bit more educated into the futures market. Cause I, like, I kind of saw some questions in here. Like some of the people in here didn't know what a futures contract is. I don't suggest you go in there, not unless you take the class before so you know exactly what you're doing. So if you have traded futures before or if you know what futures are, you could start trading futures, okay, with me. Like, I'm serious about trading. I trade every single day. This is my track record. I make more money than I lose money. I mean... I'm an open book. I showed you my stats. I showed you what's under the hood in here, right? 
So what's included? Live futures trading room. If you want to join, it's $299 a month. And per year, you're getting $2,999. So you're basically getting two months off if you're going through the yearly. You're going to expect exactly the same thing that you have expected that we have discussed in the room. You're going to get the pre-market game plan. You're going to get institutional levels that we talk about. We talk, uh, we also uh, provide 100% guided trading. So basically, when you get in a trade, you're going to be alerted. When you have the entry, have the stop, have the targets, I'm going to trail the whole thing for you. Uh, real time response to all your questions, all your trading questions. You can even email us. You have this live screen share all the time. You get lectures and mentoring throughout the month, access to risk position size calculator, performance tracker, guidelines, and so much more. So what I want to do here is I want to take you to the page. So here is our service. Here are our services. And this is the futures trading room. So if you're interested in joining, make sure that you read everything in here. And if there's anything that isn't clear, you could email us for further information. But most of the information, the hundred percent of the information is here. Uh, so if you want to go to the track performance, okay, here it is. Okay, here it is. All right, this is the track performance since 2017, since we initiated the trading room. Okay, here it is. Boom. From 2017, you see all these years right here? Boom. All right. And in here, we have all our trades. Obviously, I post them at the end. I copy and paste them from, from our tracker that I'm going to show you in a second where our tracker is. Hold on just one second. All right. And here are the stats. You have October. This is October right here. You have November, etc. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something. All right, let's see. So when you join the trading room, you will have access to the performance tracker, to the performance portfolio. Okay, let's see. Do you guys see it? Let's see. All right, do you guys see this? Do you see my cursor? Do, 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 do. Give me a one if you see my cursor. Okay, cool. All right, so you can see January 2023, right? Okay, cool. All right, I wasn't sure because I navigated. All right, so when you join, okay, when you join, you're gonna have all the trades that are gonna be posted here, up to date, okay, all the trades. So let's go back down here to November. And these are our trades. This is the open house here. This is the open house. This is what we did in the open house. I have to update this because we exited this. These two trades right here, these are losing trades. So we had one, two, three, four, five winning trades and two losing trades. So you can see what the balance is. You win more than you lose. All right. So once you get access to the trading room, we're going to send you access to this performance tracker. You're also going to get my personal performance right here. And you can see how much money I made. Every single month, every single, you have the month over here, you have all the trades, how many trades I took and how, how I ended up the week. All right. And you can see here, transparent. This is from my performance, my personal performance right here. Okay. So this is October at the end of November, you're going to get November right here. You can't get it any more transparent than this. Okay. You got risk management sheet. What is so important right here is that you have full size, you have micros to see, you know, the size, the ticks, the points, how much they are, plus, which is the golden, golden opportunity for you guys. You have a risk calculator for futures. You also have one for stocks over here. Okay, so what you do, click on this. So for example, here, you're going to input your account size. Let's say you have... 57,000 in your account size, right? Your account size is 57,000. 
then if you're going to risk half a percent, you're going to be risking 285 per trade. If you're using 1%, you're going to use 570. You just put 570 over here. And this is what you're going to be using. So for example, if you are going to have a trade in the Dow, and if the Dow has, I don't know, let's say 52 points, stop. You're going to go to 50. And you're going to take the trade with two contracts. That's what I mean by position sizing. You don't do this. You're going to lose money in the market constantly, guaranteed, 100%, no question. If you want to grow your account, your position size, you're going to grow your account guaranteed if you have the right strategies that you apply. To. So you need to know how to trade, and this is going to help you get out there. You want to grow your account, okay? All right, uh, what else we have and we offer here is we have rules, you have guidelines as well for entries for exit how to do it uh we also provide trade out loud funding uh these are cfds these are not futures contracts like futures futures but you could trade futures you could trade stocks you could trade cryptos you could trade forex all from one platform you go to the website right here and it's also under services under services funded accounts you got more information there Okay, Daniel, we have partnered a long time ago. My gosh, I don't even remember when, probably like as soon as they came out because I know them personally. Uh, this is Top Step and we uh, we have partnered with them. You get some uh, commission, you get some uh, deals if you go through us. Uh, you have uh, roll dates because if you're a futures trader, you need to know when the roll dates are just like in oil today, right? So you need to know this. This is our year to date performance. This is 2023 right here. This is 2022, this is 2021. And by the way, one thing that is very important to note is that all of the trades that are here, these are this is a performance tracker. These, this, these are not position sized. If you position size, you're going to have your profits are going to be way bigger than this, way bigger than this. If you position size, OK, because it's one thing when you make 55 points in, um, let's say, in YM. Right. This should be what or it should be like one R or something. Right. Depends on the difference between the entry and the stop. Because you're exponentially going to have bigger profits when you position size. OK. I, mean, I, I don't know if if you guys want to listen to what I'm saying, you know, that's fine. If not, I'm telling you, like, I want to be as honest as, as I co can possibly be because I want to see you guys succeed. OK, um, I'm only trading two hours a day. I love having the company to trade and it, it makes like it makes my time worthwhile. And I love sharing this information with you guys. Because there is a lot of money to be made into the market. A lot of money. I'm a true testament of the money that you can make into the market. All right. So other than that, uh, with, um, oh, let's see, where is it? Okay, here, you also get option expiration calendar. You're going to get layouts if you're using Think or Swim by TD Ameritrade, now Schwab. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if you don't have a system where you have everything laid out on your platform, on your trading platform, uh, this is the way I have it. And it's not even my concept because my uh, mentor uh, actually gave me his layout. So um, this is the only way you could see everything that is happening in the market. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to toggle through charts. This is it right there. I'm also using um, Transpider. I love using Transpider. Um, I use it all the time to share charts, especially with my members. If they have a question, I get back to them with explanations on the charts. Um, all right, you got holidays, you got a disclaimer, you got the indicators that we're using. So a lot of things that are happening, okay? So once again, if you are ready to uh, jump into the futures training room, if you're serious about making money, if you respect the rules, because I want people that join to make money. I want people that join to respect position sizing. I don't want people to come in, wing it, and then say, eh, I'm going to give up because eh, it doesn't work. It works. 
people that we have, like literally from when we opened the room, okay, uh, when we opened the room, we literally wanted people to succeed. And not only that, but the people that we had from our first courses in 2015, they're still in the training room for uh, with us because we have a lot of fun. It's better to trade in a group than to trade alone. Okay, better to trade in the room and then to trade alone. And this is why I have the trading room. I don't need to have the trading room, by the way. I, I literally don't. But I love trading in the room. I love it. I literally love to share all my information with you guys. I want to make everybody succeed. So that's the reason why. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to bring my 20% or my 10%. DJ, I'm going to tell you long yes. I'm not going to give you any parameters. <laughs> Say <So>, sayonara. <laughs> Trading alone is, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. Trading alone is sucks. Trading alone sucks. And I was, I mean, I don't even know if I ever traded alone, to be honest, because I was in so many groups. When I first started trading, like I said, I was paying like $500 for the platform. I was paying $600 for the trading room. And I was paying like commissions and fees. Like there's no, I think it was like 25. No, it was $10. In 10, it was like $25 in and out. So when you started trading, you were already, you were already in the hole more, more than $1,000. I bet you if they applied the same rules today, everybody would be a much better trader. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Okay, cool. All right. We do have a Discord room and it's for members only. All right. So uh, if they have something to chat, but I really, I, like, I don't like, uh, and I don't want to encourage traders to trade outside of the of the power hour. OK, I don't I don't really encourage that. All right. So we also have the power income futures trading course that is coming up in December. And uh, it will be taught between December 11th and the 15th. And uh, it is the last course for this uh, quarter for this month. Uh, it's a five-day online course, and this is going to take you from student to literally pro trader. Your The course is always live. You're also going to receive the recordings from the course, plus every single time we, re we teach the course, you're going to be invited for the retake. You get lifetime access to the Power Inc. of Futures Trading Course live, where literally we take you from zero to hero, from student to pro trader. You're also provided an e-manual that now is over 500 pages of education, strategies, trading plans, management, trading psychology, everything you get a limited life retail so let's say you take the course in december and we are going to have another course in um march in march you're going to be invited to take the course again you don't have to pay a penny we encourage traders to come for the free retakes. We have traders that have been in the free retakes for 20 times because at the materials that I teach are so comprehensive that you're go it's going to make your head spin and you need time to absorb everything. And if every single time when you come, you absorb 20%, or 10%, that's phenomenal. The key to the system is how you put everything together. 
That's the key, how you put everything together. You also get three months access, and this is going to be valid now. That's it until Saturday because we only offer one month free in the trading room with the course. So you're going to get three months access in the futures trading room. So what a concept. I teach you how to trade. So I teach you how to fish. Plus, I give you all the trades. You are basically going to make money while you're learning how to trade. What a concept. In the trading room, I hold your hands through the trades. And we're going to teach you how to become a successful trader and implement what you have learned in the course. So you're going to have the exact entries, the stops, the targets, everything. Everything's going to be on the mic. It's going to be posted in the room as well. So you're not going to be left alone and saying, oh, I bought the course. What happens if you buy a DVD or you read a book? I recommended a book earlier. What's going to happen? Are you going to say, hey, where am I going to find Van Tharp? I'm sorry, he's dead, but. How can you talk to, if you have a question, what are you going to do? Who are you, who are you going to ask? Well, people that are taking my course can email me, can Skype me, can call me, can text me and say, hey, I have a question. How do I do that? Or how do I do this? You're also, if you're very new to trading, if you're very new to trading, we provide you access to a one day trading lab. And I'm actually thinking of doing, cause we haven't done this live. We actually have this, uh, uh, the trading lab. We have it with, um, with the 10 day course, which we're not going to do this time. Uh, we're just going to do the five day, the 10 day. You're going to say, I'm going to show you on the website. It's totally different, but we're going to do it in, uh, in March. Um, so you're going to have access to a one day trading lab. So very new to trading. You have no idea how to install a platform. We teach you how to do it on the Thinkorswim platform. Okay. And pretty much you're going to have to, um, talk to your broker and arrange everything the way Thinkorswim is arranged. I'm not an affiliate with Thinkorswim, by the way, I'm not in any way, shape or form affiliated with them. All I am is using their platform, period. So we're thinking about doing this sometime in January, maybe, maybe I haven't decided yet, but you're going to get access to the on-demand course, one day trading lab. It's going to teach you how to enter the trade, how to raise your stops when you're in a trade. You know, it's going to teach you a lot of things. Like it's a one day trading lab. How, like, like I said, you know, it's going to teach you the difference between the bid and the ask and how to read the dome and all that fun stuff. So it's a one day trading lab. You're also going to get access to a private X feed where you're offered alerts when the market environment is changing, when there is news, updates on trades. So for example, we get into a swing trade. Okay. Uh, so when you, for example, uh, I love it. Uh, Barry, thank you so much. <laughs> so I love it that you guys are already answering some questions in here. I am so appreciative. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Oscar, the course is um, from two o'clock to 4.30 or five o'clock, depending on all, all the Q&As when we wrap up, we often go a little bit overboard. Okay, so um, uh, in the morning we trade and the course is in the afternoon. Okay, it's fully recorded. If you can't attend live, you can attend the, uh, you can attend the, uh, you, you can view the recordings. And then after that, if you have any questions and if you were not able to um, to do it live, then you can email me and we could go one on one and I can walk you through certain areas that you need further explanation if you were not at the live one. OK, so that's totally free of charge. That's consultation and coaching. All right. So you get access to the private X feed. Uh, for example, if I call a trade, a swing trade law, uh, a swing trade now, and I say, I don't know, uh, let's get gold uh, over, I don't know, 2000 long. Okay. So you're left hanging. You know where the stop is. You know where the um, entry is. 
but you know, don't, you don't know the management or, you know, somebody like to guide you. This is what the X feed is for. So if we're in a swing trade, okay, so I'm going to go to my private X feed and update you guys. Obviously, it's a swing trade, so I may or may not update you that very day if it's within parameters. You also get the platform layout. You also get a Discord room where you can interact with other students. Uh, but usually all the uh, all the students interact in the trading room. They're, everybody's in the trading room. Uh, you get student personal support. You get a risk sheet that you guys just saw. So if you're ready to commit and re say, hey, you know what? I'm going to jump in on this opportunity and I'm going to change the way I trade in 2024 because this course is in December. We start a brand new chapter in 2024. The reason why I'm saying a brand new chapter is not only for yourself and your trading career, but you're starting a new earning season. So you want to make sure you top on that because there are opportunities within this three month cycle. So the course is December 11th through the 15th. It's Monday through Friday from 2 o'clock to 4.30. And it's a five-day live online. I'm teaching the course. You guys are going to have access to everything, the manual, the recordings, everything. So if you want to join, you can hop on tradeoutloud.com. So I'm going to show you exactly where you go. All right. So here it is. You go, to you go to the education tab and you go to futures day trading. Unlimited. The recordings are available for a limited time. So they're yours forever, forever. And you're going to receive, uh, every time we have a new course, you're going to receive new recordings from the new course. Okay. So that's super cool. You're always going to be with the same group of people, uh, not with the same group of people because we're always having new traders, but you're always going to be in the loop. So if we make changes to the manual, you're always going to receive the update, updated manual. Uh, if we decide, I don't know, if I decide, uh, you know what, I'm going to include something else in the manual, we're going to do that as well. So let me tell you a little bit of what we cover in the course, okay? So basically, it's everything that you need to know, A to Z, you won't need another book, another course, another webinar, nothing. So people that are here in the trading room right now, I don't know if they didn't left the building already because we're done but can tell you that this is the ultimate complete course. This is the course that I wish I had when I first started trading, seriously. All right, so this is the course. Uh, first of all, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take you to an introduction. You're gonna receive this uh, on demand. So once you join the course, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna receive all the materials, uh, the welcome emails and all that fun stuff. Uh, and right before, the course starts, you're going to receive an on-demand recording with the introduction to futures, where we talk about futures, what futures are, market participants. We're going to talk about algorithms as well. We're going to talk about contracts, how they work, contract size, what is the rollover, what you need to pay attention to, how to trade a rollover. We're going to talk about expiration, what happens at that certain expiration. We're going to talk trading hours for different types of futures. Uh, we're going to talk about futures, uh, um, uh, futures indices, about commodities, about bonds, algo trading. So this is all on demand before you actually jump into the course on Monday. Okay, so make sure you allocate a little bit of time because you're going to review this. Uh, we're, you're going to receive the recording before the class, about one to two days before the class. Uh, then we are, this is what we're doing live. We're doing charting. Charting is one of the biggest components of trading. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about the psychology behind candlestick shapes and forms and sizes that are going to give you an idea of what's going to happen into that trading day. Then we're going to talk about patterns and pivots. We're going to talk about candlestick formations. Then we have another chapter where we actually provide you the, um, uh, charting tools, indicators that we use. Okay. And these are just the indicators that we, this is just an intro to the indicators that we use. Then we talk about market cycles. This is, I think, one of the most important aspects of our course, because it talks about the optimum timing of buying or shorting opportunities, optimum time for exiting long and short positions, and optimum timing for holding positions. 
Uh, this is one of the most important thing, uh, the cycle in the market, where the price is at within the cycle within the market. And then you know how we evaluate whether you're going to be bullish or bearish. Uh, then we talk about market trends and the characteristics of uptrends, what we do, how we buy in uptrends, how we buy in downtrends or short and downtrends. Um, characteristics of sideways markets are sideways market viable, how we do it, how we plan on it. There are three tactics actually that go into these sideways markets and how and when to trade each of the markets like up, down or sideways. Then we talk about time frames. Time frames are uh, there are two sets of time frames. There are the executional time frames and we have the analytical time frames. Then we have multi time frame fusion. So what this means is blending multiple time frames to have that to have those confluence areas where we find out those institutional levels. Then we take you to technical analysis. Like I said, you won't need another book. You won't need another um, um, webinar. You won't need another a uh, DVD or a life course because we provide you everything. We provide you everything from A to Z, including technical analysis, which is the biggest component, right? Um, how technical analysis is going to help you, the important steps that you need to take in order to understand technical analysis, how support resistance works, uh, work, support resistance fusion trending zones. This is where you find out your institutional zones. Uh, you have trend lines. Uh, we're going to talk about how to trade with trend lines, how the impact of pivot points and who trades with pivot points and exactly how to trade with pivot points. Because I know a lot of you guys in here asked about what indicators are I use. These are this is just an iteration of the indicators that I use. But I I can't show you right now in literally three days on how to use pivot points. There are secrets on how to use pivot points and how price action uses how press action reacts into these pivot points and what you need to look for. We're going to talk about fulcrums. This is the best kept secret of institutional trading. There are four price points where institutional traders scale in or scale out of trades. And once you know where these fulcrums are, you have confidence to know, yeah, I'm getting more or I'm exiting here. Um, we're going to talk about moving averages, simple moving averages. Uh, we're going to talk about exponential moving averages as well and the impact and how you need to use them in order to add to your clarity into the trade. We're talking about, we're going to talk about Fibonacci's, Fibonacci uh, retracements, Fibonacci projections, because what happens if you have something, let's say NASDAQ goes over that 16,000, whatever it is, the high 068 or whatever. Um, let's say it gets into that all time high. What is the next target above that? So you need to know how to use tools that we teach you in the technical analysis course uh, to have that measured move because you need to have you need to be on, on in the same on the same in the same pace, trade the same pace as institutional traders. Just because we're trading from home doesn't mean that uh, we're going to have less education than uh, than um, these institutional traders and so much more. So the technical analysis uh, um, uh, chapter is one of the biggest. Then we talk about the market tempo. Market tempo, these are proprietary day trading reactionary times that I'm going to teach you so you don't lose your time and money. So when you look at a chart, you know exactly, okay, it's time. I need to look for this setup at this time. Or I need to look for a different setup at a different time. So that makes it easier for you. Then we have trigger times. These are proprietary trigger times for the New York trading session because this is this is where the volume is at, and they're more reactive in this. Uh, um, they're more reactive into the New York trading session. You have reactionary market phases. These are, and I'm going to take you uh, literally through these phases, through these tempos and times and tell you exactly what kind of strategies you need. Uh, and if you want to scalp, I'm going to teach you the strategies. I'm going to teach you the timing uh, and the time frames that you need to be active in the market and when to stay away from the market. And I'm going to teach you if you want a stress-free environment, what time frames and what timings you need to trade at. Then we talk about the anatomy of the trade, how to calculate precise entries with laser sharp precision, how to calculate stops that, that keep you in the trade longer, how to calculate targets and calculating your risk. 
We teach 10 proprietary trading strategies in our course. We're going to teach you not only intraday trading, but we're going to teach you overnight trading. So we're going to go a little bit into the swing trading domain. Uh, we're going to teach you trading, uh, trading, uh, like I said, trading patterns, uh, trailing methods. We have three trailing methods that we teach our traders to stay in the trade as long as the trade is running higher or lower, to stay in the trade as much as you can, to milk the trade as much as you can, uh, and at the same time to not give profits back. This is what trailing is all about. We teach you money management, trading journal, and how you need to um, journal, really journal your trades and the advantages of uh, journaling. I tapped only like 0.001% here, uh, today about journaling. We're gonna we have a whole chapter about uh, about trading psychology. Uh, and by the way, a, a lot of these segments right here are recorded because otherwise our course would be uh, 90 days instead of one week. So you after the course, you could actually this is actually a brand new this is this is like a, a totally different chapter trading psychology, right? Because you need to know trading psychology. Because trading puts what puts you in the right uh, in the right mind frame, right? All right. Uh, then how about an action plan and a trading plan? I ask you guys here. Do you guys have a trading plan? Do you guys? I'm going to help you develop that action plan and that trading plan. I'm going to give you my timing, and I'm going to give you what you need to do at every. It, it takes you literally from five minutes to five minutes to five minutes to fifteen minutes. Uh, through the day from before the open till after the close of the New York trading session. All right. Uh, then I think one of the biggest things is to put everything together. You don't have anybody out there right now in the trading world that is going to teach you everything and then it's going to teach you how to put everything together. So the last day, day five, is uh, divided into half. We're going to talk about money management and the other half is how to put everything together. And then you're also uh, um, provided with the platform layout and so on and so forth. So this is what we're offering right now. If you guys want to opt for, uh, and we have a different course, and this is again within, uh, within the same course, the power income course. But again, this is what the three months is included. So this $5,999. This is a different thing that we're offering. This is an additional five days hands-on experience. You don't have to take it now. You can take the first course now. You can take this course later. Okay. Now here's the, uh, here's the thing. This course is $8,999, but it includes the $5,999. If you decide to go, uh, you know, for the uh, $8,999, that's fine. That's fine. But if you decide to say, hey, first I'm going to take the $5,999 and then I can add this course after a month or after two months or after three months, that's fine. This takes you a step further, okay? Now, number one, if you're a really beginner trader, you need this. This is the trading incubator. So what I do is I have these small sessions with traders that are in the incubator and we do computer requirements, setting up the platform, installing the Thinkorswim platform, platform features, order types, when and how to use them, placing orders, setting alerts, trading terminology. This is just day one. We're just getting warmed up. Day two is gathering daily intel, tracing institutional levels, analyzing the market, selecting what you need to trade because you saw yesterday how divergent the market was. We had a big stall in three indices and we had Russell that was powering through, right? <clears throat> then we're going to take you to selecting and pre-planning your trade, practicing executions, live orders, practicing and placing alerts. You're also going to have some extra classes. You're, I'm going to teach you damage control. We don't teach you damage control in the first course, in the five-day course, but we teach you damage control into the trading incubator. Remember today I was telling, telling you guys about the doubt that I would like to add to the trade? That is part of the damage control. 
It's technical. It's 100% technical, very easy to do. All you need to do is respect what I am teaching in damage control. Now, in day three, we have another class that we're teaching scaling into uh, scaling into trades, how to scale into trades like institutional traders, like hedge funds. You don't do it like randomly throughout the chart. You need to have strict parameters. And in day three, aside from scaling into trades, you're going to uh, we're going to gather again the daily intel. We're going to analyze the market. We're going to do some live trading together. Uh, we're going to do uh, trading execution and practicing trailing. And this is going to be in the afternoon. And then on day four, and by the way, these days, are there's one class per month because they're, they're so comprehensive. And then we have uh, day four, which is profit stacking, pyramid trading, so there's so many things that we share in here. So if when you're getting a trending market, you want to make the market pay. You want to make it pay. So this is pyramid trading and how you do the pyramid trading like a professional. So you keep on adding to the trade. And at the same time, you're not risking anything because you're playing with the already banked cash and you're definitely compounding. But within the trade, you're not waiting for the trade to close. This is immensely profitable when you have a trending market. And again, on day four, we're still going to do some scanning and for some setups, developing patience, uh, position sizing. We're gonna, again, teach you position sizing, live trading, and this course. And then on day five, we have, again, a huge day of education. We have intelligent stops. Intelligent stops are great in a fleecy market. This was a market today to use intelligent stops. I didn't do it now with you guys because you don't know the concept of intelligence stop sometimes we do it in the uh and we do it in the trading room when it's appropriate and i don't do it very often because i have clear stops but sometimes we need to use these intelligence stops and today was a market for intelligence stops then we're going to talk about volatility and how to use the volatility to your advantage and then we're going to present to you the golden the 10 a.m golden rule so there is so much information that we share with you. And again, if you want to hop in and say, hey, you know what? But by the way, the trading incubator, so you're going to get the course. Um, uh, the course is going to start uh, in December and the trading incubator is going to start in January. And I think we have uh, one session per week, not per month. I'm sorry. I think I said one, one session per month. No, it's one per week. So you're going to have five weeks of the trading incubator outside of the trading room. So I'm not inter, uh, you know, interlapping anything with you guys. So if you think this is for you, just hop in. It's for new traders. Uh, again, it's so phenomenal for new traders because you're getting the extra special attention aside from the trading room. Plus you're getting this course, okay? So it includes this course, just FYI. And if you think, you know what, I'm gonna start with this and later on I'm gonna add that, that's fine, okay? It's not a problem. So this basically concludes today's session. I'm just going to go through the chat box to see if there are any uh, questions that are pending. Uh, all right. Let's see. All right. I think I caught up with all the questions. Okay, cool. Okay, cool, 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 guys. All right. All right, so this is it, guys, for today's open house. Uh, by the way, before I leave, what I always do, of course, and I, as I was talking to you guys, I still look at the market. So I'm going to uh, take it back to the market just to do a quick wrap up and a quick recap. And I was telling you guys earlier about the intelligent stops. Um, <clears throat> so today would be a day for an intelligent stop. Typically, what I like to do is I want to see when the price rotates on a higher time frame, and then I like to put my stop below that. Uh, that it would be like in one sentence, right? Uh, but definitely, we're seeing a very strong structure. I would say analyze and definitely look at the markets from the one hour prism because it would be like the way to go. Uh, 15 minutes, so just one hour, just to cut some of that noise. Uh, you could see that the purple levels are still intact. And believe it or not, I'm still contemplating about uh, of getting long about above these purple lines right here if we cross through them today. Um, they're very strong institutional signals 
at this point in time. And I think that once the price gets above those, uh, they may start powering through. If not, and if they don't go above this, then the price action may start even pulling back. We're seeing a little bit of strength into NASDAQ. Finally, we're getting RTY rotation on the 15 minute. One hour is to, uh, to uh, it may be in play here. This is one of the strategies that we apply, maybe bullish over 81 and a half uh, with a stop under 70. Uh, price target into 89 to 90, and then it could ride up a little bit higher into the 95. And if it catches, and if it prints a 95, then it's going to go to 1800. So this would be like the wrap up uh, for today. I hope you guys had a great time. I know I did. I love sharing charts and my trades. Uh, I mean, you came into my higher house. I invited you into my house and I showed you how I trade. I showed you everything that I uh, that I'm uh, doing uh, in the market. Uh, you've seen all the all my portfolio. Um, there are going to be some good trades. There are going to be some stops. Like I said, as a trader, I'm focusing on the big wins, the small wins, the break even trades, and the very small losses. And that's pretty much it. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope you guys had a fantastic time. I know I had. It was such a great pleasure to see so many new faces in here. And believe it or not, we have over 1,100 people that have uh, registered for the open house. So I'm, wow, I'm like in disbelief of how many people want to start making money into the market and want to be consistent. And they're serious about trading because you're uh, literally allocating time from your very busy day just to sit here with me. So I really appreciate it. And I hope I delivered a lot of information. I hope I delivered, you know, um, a lot of, um, you know, um, I, I, I made you guys open your eyes to what the potential is for trading. Okay, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, Mark. See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Have a great rest of uh, the week. Uh, and also, happy Thanksgiving for those of you guys that are celebrating uh, next week. And I hope to see you guys in the course in December. It's a really literally going to change your life. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great weekend and have a great, great rest of the weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody.